Hello, my name is Elena. Welcome to my channel where I do fun art challenges and talk about whatever's on my mind. And I'm just gonna say right off the bat that this video might seem more frazzled than some of my other ones. I'm not sure. But basically, aside from the art challenge, I'm also trying to challenge myself with my editing and the voiceover. I tend to be overly perfectionistic and it causes me to take way too long on my videos. So I'm gonna be doing something different today in terms of how I approach the voiceover and the editing to try and make it less time consuming for me. And you all might not even notice a difference, but if you do and it's disappointing or distracting in any way, just let me know and I'll be more thorough in the next one, I promise. But getting right to the topic of today's video, I will be doing the fifth installment of my monthly Drawing Your Sonic OC series, where I draw and talk about your Sonic OCs that you've sent to me via my Google form. If you are interested in maybe having your OC drawn in a future installment of this series, emphasis on maybe, because there's only a small chance anyone's OC will be drawn and there are hundreds of submissions and they're chosen at random. So if you would like that chance, you may fill out the Google form linked in the description. We've got some fun OCs today, so let's go ahead and just get started. All right, welcome to the time lapse, everybody. So first off, we have Scrawly the Werebat, and she was submitted by Nightwing. And Scrawly is a trans werebat. She is half wolf, half bat. She can fly, has super strength, and she can absorb chaos energy. Scrally sadly lost her mother in a battle, and so now it is only Scrally, her dad, and her annoying brothers. Scrally's brothers bully her pretty badly, which has caused her to be very scared of other people. And I think there was a typo here, but I believe it says that she's afraid of being bullied for having wings. And I can see this making sense, maybe her brothers are more wolf-like, so they don't have wings and maybe they tease her for it. And the last note I got was that she likes fajitas. Queen. Excellent taste. She has a pretty sad backstory, but the reference photo is so cute, so I wanted to also make her look cute with her posing, but also try and show that she's a bit shy and timid. I tried to make it look like the wing on the right is folding and sort of covering her, maybe shielding her vision like she's trying to shy away from something, but honestly, I had a lot of trouble capturing it, and I think it just ended up looking like it's closing up instead of covering her. I should have looked up a reference, but oh well. And the reference photo I was sent did not include color, so I pretty much guessed. The only thing I knew was that she was red with purple highlights lights, but I am very happy with my approach to it. And in general, with this round of OCs that I'm doing in this video, I'm feeling like another growth stage, not as big as in my last video, but with these OCs, I was either trying to do a more interesting pose or really take advantage of the blending modes to try and make the lighting and color more interesting. And it was a lot of fun. With Scrally, I think adding a multiply layer and focusing the shadows towards her shoes helped to bring emphasis to her face and I was really happy with the result. Thank you Nightwing for your submission. Scrally is super cute and I hope that you like how I captured her. Next up, we have Eve the Praying Mantis, submitted by Sanu, and for her abilities, she has super strength and she is very quick on her feet. She mostly wears dark or black clothing and it adds to her intimidating stature, and she's a lot taller than the average Mobian due to being a female praying mantis. So Sanu said that there's a lot of lore about Eve and the entire concept that he has for her world, but to make it very simple, Eve is the princess, soon to be queen, praying mantis of her kingdom. There are four kingdoms in total, each with their own queen mantis. The women mantises are typically taller, stronger, and are held to a higher standard than the men mantises. And because of this, in addition to Eve being the daughter of the queen of her kingdom, she's a highly trained fighter, takes a lot of pride in her own work and abilities, and she absolutely hates being mocked or talked down to. While being as tall as she is, she is quite young and acts entitled to whatever she wants, whenever she wants, due to her royal status. Despite this, she isn't entirely mean. She trains hard to be the best defense and warrior to fight for her kingdom if they ever went to war, and she cares for the people's opinions and suggestions on how to make society better for all of them. And she spoils her friends with gifts and affection as much as she can. Her individual story has her kingdom being under attack by Eggman's army as Eggman tries to take control of everyone, as usual, but then they get saved by the Sonic crew. She then falls for Knuckles as he saves her at some point during the fight, and that begins a semi-one-sided relationship between her and Knuckles since he isn't very reciprocal of her affections. So you all already know I love a unique OC species, and I think this might be the first insect one I've done for this series, and I was immediately hyped about it as soon as I saw the reference photo. Your art style is very cool, Sanu, and the reference is top notch, so thank you. It was very fun to draw Eve. I absolutely love her concept and how detailed your world building is. 
And I also love hearing about OCs that have feelings for canon characters. It just adds to the fun of making OCs, you know? I had a good amount of trouble with her pose only because her coat is so long, it covers her legs. So my first attempt at the pose felt really off once I added the clothing. So I had to make an adjustment there, but I am very pleased with how her hand came out. A little bit of foreshortening there to make the pose more dynamic, which I usually shy away from, but not this time. I also ended up making the colors a bit more vibrant than I intended. I know she has this dark, intimidating aesthetic, but I think high saturation is just more of my personal sensibilities, which I I actually want to challenge myself to not do as much, but I digress. Anyways, thank you Sanu for your submission. I love Eve. She's very cool and definitely unique, which is my favorite thing to see when I do these videos. So I really hope that you like how I depicted her. Next up, we have Splatter the Bat, submitted by Eclipse, and Splatter mostly fights using the myriad of explosives that she has on their person. She is a traveling artist and a demolitions expert. Which one is their main versus side job depends entirely on which is more useful in the moment or funnier for the bit. Her art drew Rouge's attention to them, and after the creation of a stunning portrait, Splatter joined Rouge and Shadow on their travels. They're a sassy creature who loves puns and has a really morbid sense of humor. Her bag is full of paint and bombs, never having less than 15 on their person unless some have been used or haven't been replaced. And firstly, I just wanted to say that I really love the reference photo that you sent in Eclipse. Your art is beautiful. She looks so sweet in it and reading the description, I was surprised to learn that her personality is actually kind of wild and chaotic. So I definitely wanted my drawing to play into that side of her. And I also wanted to make sure that she's holding both art supplies and some kind of explosive, so I went with paintbrushes in one hand and then an old-timey bomb in the other hand. And I wanted to see if I could do more of an action pose with this one, and I also wanted her expression to show more of that humorous and chaotic side of them. I also really like their outfit. I especially like the cropped jacket and the shirt with the heart-shaped hole in the middle. I thought that those aspects were super cute and fashionable. And the color palette overall is very unique and I'm a fan. While I am happy with the final result, I do wish I had made them look as pretty and elegant as she did in your reference photos, but that's just a nod to how lovely your art is and probably a nod to how I need to practice action poses more often. And I'm realizing now I completely forgot to draw her bag, so I am really sorry about that. But still, I hope that you enjoy my drawing of Splatter. Thank you so much for your submission, Eclipse. Next up, we have Switch the Cat submitted by Draco Wolf. And Switch's powers are very interesting and very cool. It's called Matter Switch. And basically it's an ability that allows him to switch any inanimate objects between solids, liquids, and gases. So for example, he could make a wall transparent for him to walk through or he could solidify a portion of water allowing him to walk across a lake. But the drawback is that he needs to eat tons of matter in order for him to alter the equal amount of matter in the object, otherwise he will end up passing out partway through. Switch's design is loosely derived from two mythical cats, firstly the Scottish slash Celtic cat Sith and the Japanese Nekomata. Draco Wolf says that Switch is meant to discover his backstory alongside the audience if she were to ever make an official story about him. The original concept was that him and two other OCs wake up in a city in the midst of being reclaimed by nature, with no memories and artificial chaos emeralds embedded in their chests. They address each other by nicknames that they picked up over time, and so far one memory has returned to Switch. It starts as the visual of a stained glass window, but as time would go on in the story, the memory would expand, revealing that Switch actually has a little sister, and for unknown reasons, the two had made a campsite slash home in an abandoned church. So for this one, there was no reference photo, but Draco Wolf provided a fairly detailed description, so I'm hoping that I was able to capture Switch well enough. He looks like a black cat with two tails, yellowish-orange eyes, and a white artificial chaos emerald embedded in the shape of a four-point star in his chest. His outfit consists of a pair of blue trainers, which I'm pretty sure are a type of shoes, at least that's what Google told me, so I hope I did that right, and he also wears a pair of Celtic knot bracelets and a cold shoulder jacket made from clear plastic with a teal and green plaid pattern that glows in the dark. I took a couple of creative liberties if things weren't specified. For example, I added two bangs to his forehead because I thought it was looking a little bit sparse as I was drawing him. The jacket concept was really creative and a lot of fun to do and I'm really pleased with how it came out. One of the harder parts for me was the Celtic knot bracelets because I looked up what a Celtic knot looks like and I was like, how am I supposed to draw that? But I tried suggesting the shape instead of getting too caught up in the details like I normally do. And I think it works out, although I do wish I'd had the time to make them look a bit more detailed and sharper. My favorite detail of Switch is his power, and I think that Matter Switch is such a cool idea for an ability, so I knew that I wanted to incorporate that somehow. I had a lot of trouble narrowing down the pose, but I thought the easiest way to show his ability was the example of him standing on a frozen slate on water to imply that he changed the water from a liquid to a solid. 
I'm not sure if it would mean that he actually turns it into an ice, but I feel like that's what makes sense. So I wanted to make sure that he looked as cool and mysterious as his backstory, and I think I achieved that. Overall, I loved working on this one, and I'm very pleased with the final results, so thank you Draco Wolf for your submission, and I hope that you like my rendition of Switch the Cat. Whoa, bet you didn't expect to see me here. For those who don't know, this is the sick and tired Elena avatar. Um, I use this when I need to go off script a little bit or just need to say something. I don't know what's going on in this recording. I'm about to record the last sec section. <laughs> Um, I tend to re-record myself and have trouble recording in general and I'm trying to be easier on myself but I'm listening back to the recordings I've done so far and I feel like I sound even more even more disorganized than usual. I think I might if this whole video sounds ridiculous I am truly very sorry. I promise the next one will be better. Sorry about that. Just wanted to say that but now let's get into the final OC. Finally, before I was so rudely interrupted by me, <laughs> it's time to get into the final OC of this video, which is Cambo the Raccoon, submitted by Mateo. And Cambo has the ability to shapeshift, and because of that, he also technically has immortality. His body is constantly shifting new young cells to replace old and damaged cells unconsciously, so he's basically always gonna be young, and he's pretty much immortal. But for his backstory, whenever he shifts his form, a part of it comes off as a type of energy, which is why he's always hungry. But Dr. Eggman sees him one day and realizes that he could use Cambo as an energy source. And so naturally, Cambo gets captured and is forced to help Dr. Eggman. And of course, Sonic and the team comes to help him while stopping one of Dr. Eggman's schemes. So after he's freed, he goes on a trip of self-discovery and starts uncovering his past. In the meantime, he starts a friendship with Amy and a closer one with Knuckles. So I was really excited to work on Cambo because this was actually one of the very early OC submissions that I got way back when I first started this series, before I knew it would be a series, before I had even made the form. I really, really love Cambo's design. It is so simple and straightforward, and he definitely looks like he fits right in with the Sonic cast. I didn't do anything super fancy with his pose, I just wanted to capture his chill, laid-back attitude that you can see in the reference photos that Mateo sent, which are also super cute by the way, and I'm super happy with the final drawing on this one. I was really getting into using the blending modes with Cambo, and I got even more detailed when it came to carving out specific lights and shadows on a multiply layer, and the results were so cool. It's something I'll definitely use in future drawings. I also used my tried and true technique of duplicating the line art and then using gauche and blur on it to make the lines look a little bit more hazy and dreamlike, and I think it always looks nice, but it works especially well on characters that are either more magical or more calming, which Cambo definitely is, or at least his vibe is to me. I was very indecisive about the background details, and in the end, I just kept it simple because it really doesn't matter all that much, but I like trying to make a cohesive final image if I can, and this one turned out really great in my opinion. Thank you, Mateo, for your submission. I love drawing Cambo, and I really hope that you also like how I drew him here. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot and I hope that I didn't sound too frazzled in this video. I wanted to try and be okay with being less than perfect on the voiceover. I tend to just re-record myself a billion times, and if I do mess up, I'll cover it up and it takes a million cuts and just a lot of extra effort. So I was trying to just be okay with my first go around. I'm hoping it didn't detract from the video too much, but if it did, I'm so sorry. I probably will just go back to what I usually do in the next video, but honestly, I was also just really trying to rush to finish this one because I procrastinated a bit. I've had some stuff happening in my personal life that's been consuming too much of my brain and causing a good amount of stress, but I'm really trying to focus on prioritizing my art in this channel over all those other things because that's when I feel the happiest and the most fulfilled. I also have been hard at work on making a highly requested Sonic character drawing tutorial and it's very time consuming but it is high on my priority list so if it's not out next week, it'll be out the following week. And if that happens, I might do a shorter art challenge video in between just so I don't leave y'all hanging content wise and also so I don't go too hard on just Sonic stuff. I'm a bit all over the place mentally right now but in a more positive way I'd say. I have a lot that I'm excited about and looking forward to so thank you all so much 
for your patience with my sporadic uploads and for watching my videos in general. I am really close to reaching monetization requirements on YouTube and I could have never imagined it to happen so quickly, so I'm hoping to reach that milestone by the end of the year if possible, so I can really justify pouring more time and effort into my art and into this channel. So if you'd like to help me reach that milestone, feel free to check out some of my other videos. If you like my Drawing Your Sonic OCs series, I've made a playlist so you can watch all of them. Anyways, I gotta get to work on a bunch of other stuff now, so go Go check the description for all my important links and if you'd like to go the extra mile to support me I do have a Ko-fi page where you can tip or commission me either is extremely appreciated as always and otherwise I will see you all in the next video please rest please take care of yourselves and have a wonderful day bye